Let's bring in Calvin Dark, uh, co-founder of RC Communications and campaign strategist, Adam Weiss, uh, CEO of AMWPR and a Republican strategist, uh, and Sherry Jacobus, uh, host of Politics with Sherry Jacobus on uh, Patreon. Thank you all so much for being with us. Calvin, I want to start with you. Um, how do you think this plays out? I, I was thinking about Dr. Oz. I want to shift to him for a minute because there was all this talk um, before the election that he wasn't going to concede and that Trump was going to get involved. And then he sent out this very nice, gracious statement saying, I concede and I want everyone to move on and be, be peaceful. Do you think we'll see that happen, Calvin, with some of these other candidates? I mean, it should. It's the way elections should happen. But the problem is, is I think that concession is now being equated by some folks as weakness. And that's uh, terribly unfortunate for our system. I think that Tim Ryan in Ohio gave a master class in conceding. Not only did he concede publicly, but he acknowledged that conceding was part of the democratic process. I wish all politicians of all parties would do that, but unfortunately, it's becoming a decreasing trend. And Adam, I mean, both sides have questioned results in the past. That part of this isn't new. It's gone on forever, and there's been losses. And even go back to 2018, and you think about Stacey Abrams, she didn't concede. Um, but at what point, Adam, do you think candidates cross the line? Well, I think, you know, when you have states that just can't get it right, I mean, it, it leaves them suspect to questioning. I mean, Nevada is a small state. I mean, you have casinos there, dealers in casinos that can count five decks of cards in 10 seconds if you've ever sat at a, you know, at a casino table. Why don't we hire a bunch of those casino right. you know, operators and, and guys that deal cards? I'm sure they'd get this done in five hours, right? So it does leave suspect because Nevada is a very union state. They're all a little bit of hanky-panky that goes on there because it's usually controlled by Democratic forces. So, but I think, you know, Adam Laxell, if he loses, he's a very gracious guy. He was a attorney general uh, of the state. I think he'll concede, no problem there. Wait, so you, you, Adam, really think there? You called it hanky panky. I mean, you don't think this is more of? I mean, all the evidence shows us this is just maybe a dated process that needs to change. But I mean, you say hanky panky, but there's really no evidence of of you know right. anything bad going on here, is there? In terms of changing votes. It's not, not at this point, but there's some suggestions in the past election cycles in these states. So. You know, right now it's just waiting and waiting, which leaves them suspect to say what's going on here. This is we we elect prime ministers and presidents of large nations throughout the world. When Italy has their elections and Israel has their elections, five o'clock, by four hours later, you know who the prime minister is. Yeah, and it is frustrating. Yeah, I, and I think everyone can agree. Obviously, the process needs to improve. Um, Sherry, what do you think comes next for some of these MAGA candidates if they do end up losing, like a Carrie Lake? Um, you know, eventually, I mean, she can fight and fight and fight, but if she really did lose, that's going to be the outcome. What, what do you think people like her do next? Well, I think the fact that these are looked at as Trump candidates is, and that he's uh, being resoundingly castigated today, uh, I don't think, I, I think most people, even many Republicans, hope that this is the death knell of that type of mega Republicanism. It's going to take a long time to put the party back together. Uh, but these this type of politics and, you know, when we saw what happened with uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband and we see these people, you know, making jokes about hammers and you see these candidates saying some pretty stuff that you don't even want to repeat. Uh, and going this far as if there's somebody behind them egging them on and that person has been Donald Trump. So if he, you know, announces that he's running again and, and it falls flat. Uh, and, you know, the party starts coalescing around Ron DeSantis and they've seen Donald Trump, you know, say these things about Ron DeSantis. At some point, establishment Republicans, if there are any who are left, are going to say enough. And the type of rhetoric and the tactics you know, by people like Carrie Lake and, and, and Lauren Boebert and the, these types of things and Marjorie Taylor Greene, even though she won, it's not going to be accepted even by their own peers. And at some point, the electorate is just going to get sick of it as well. well People Calvin, just go too I, I, far. I, I want to bring you in on this, Calvin, because Sherry makes a, a good point in terms of the rhetoric here. I mean, when 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 Carrie Lake calls the election officials imbeciles, I mean, even if she thinks that, I mean, but when, when we know behind the scenes they're getting threats and this is a volatile situation, I, I mean, isn't she just sort of playing with fire at this point? 
She's doing more than playing with fire. She said for months that the election will be fair if she wins. That race is one that really scares me simply because they are taking their time to make sure that it's accurate and fair. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.